Let's say that you're the chef at a restaurant that's known for local seasonal flavors. It's not enough to find 10 dishes that everyone raves about and stick with those forever. As the chef, you're expected to have something new on the menu frequently because innovation is part of what got you your rep. But maybe your first dish came together accidentally when you grabbed butternut squash instead of carrot cubes for a summer salad. The serendipity that generated the idea isn't very replicable. It's unlikely we can repeat it with consistently good results. Instead, you need a process to make good innovation more likely every time. You need trips to the farmer's market for new ingredients. You need experimental batches, and you need the ability to taste and season over and over, making small adjustments. It might seem like the writing process has nothing to do with making a tasty summer salad covered in pumpkin seeds. However, the mindset behind each phase of the writing process can transfer and help us create systems for all kinds of work and personal situations. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition. If we were to use a different process every time we work on a new project, we'd probably get a different result almost every time. Plus, it's a lot of work to create a new process over and over. It saves us time and gives us a sense of direction when we have steps that we can consistently follow regardless of the project, even if those steps are somewhat general. In another video, we made the case that the writing process is flexible and can be used for a lot of different kinds of writing. Now, with what we know about how we transfer knowledge, we can think about how the writing process and its key ideas can be brought into many parts of our lives. Specifically, you might remember that high road transfer is when we consciously reflect on how some piece of knowledge might be relevant in a new context, rather than automatically applying it, which is low road transfer. Using high road transfer and reflecting on the writing process is a great way to engage in many kinds of work systematically, and it can take us from generating ideas to making sure the final product is well suited to whoever our audience or end user is. So let's focus on some of the skills that make each step in the writing process useful. Now you might be asking, but Dr. Zarka, aren't the steps in the writing process specific or at least specific to composition? Yes, yes they are. But the mindset those steps put us in are quite general, which means they're flexible and can be adapted to whatever project is at hand. For instance, invention and all the invention techniques we've talked about like free writing or looping put us in the mindset of coming up with ideas. And that's pretty general, general enough to work for different class assignments. So if we're working on something that's really different from academic writing, we can distill invention down to the essence of its mindset, being open to all relevant possibilities, and use that as the motivation and foundation for adapting the invention step for whatever project we're working on. Like for a fairly straightforward email, invention might be a quick moment when you think about all the information that needs to be included in the email. Then you wait a beat, considering if there's anything else that's relevant and jotting down anything that comes to mind. You've taken the time to be open to possibilities based on what you know about a successful writing process. And for bigger projects, invention can help us make substantial progress at the start and also serve as a way to circle back and open things back up again. We can go into the invention mindset of being open to relevant possibilities and see new options for ideas we otherwise thought we were done developing. For example, if a real estate agent keeps getting pushback from a developer about how their newly built homes are being marketed, it could be valuable to take everyone back to invention even if the marketing materials are nearly complete. By returning to invention, they can discuss all the options available for how to sell these new houses. Rather than just moving forward with the current strategy, invention helps people see as many options as possible. Even just including invention as a step in the process is a key way to transfer what we've learned from the writing process to other work. Just like in the writing process, skipping invention can be tempting. I mean, why not just dive right into what feels like real work? But skipping invention can mean missing out on better possibilities that would have helped us accomplish our goals. The next step of the writing process, planning, puts us in the mindset that helps us create a roadmap that allows a project to move more smoothly. The actual plan we come up with will depend on the project, but the planning mindset is about coming up with a path forward. So we can consciously make time for the planning stage and adapt the writing process techniques we've talked about in this series to help us do that. Coming up with a path forward could be done by drafting a traditional outline or drawing a mind map. 
or maybe recording a voice memo of you talking to yourself as you figure your way through a project or listing out items that need to be accomplished in the project. We can also remember why planning matters in the first place. Planning matters because we're more likely to miss something if we don't have at least a rough path to follow. Planning also gives us confidence because we have an idea what the next step is whenever we finish one part of the project. Now we've come to drafting. In our episode on drafting techniques, we talked about how so much of drafting is just removing distractions and barriers to good work. Like let's say that your job involves carefully noting any errors that appear in a huge spreadsheet that you're constantly updating. Maybe you've noticed that you miss a lot of errors when you're working in the office because your coworker is always playing loud music and because your desk faces the hallway, which means you get distracted when people walking by try to be friendly and wave at you. To top it off, you're using spreadsheet software that crashes way too often, making you lose unsaved work. So to apply the mindset we've learned from the drafting stage of the writing process, we can remember that getting good work isn't a matter of just summoning more willpower. You can manage your environment to get better work done in the thick of your project. Wearing noise-canceling headphones and turning your desk away from the hallway could really increase your focus. And importing that spreadsheet into a less buggy spreadsheet app will ensure you don't have to spend time redoing your work. Obviously, logging numbers and putting words together are two different activities. But the mindset of creating the right circumstances for doing good work can be a big part of getting your best results in many contexts. Next, the revision mindset is about recognizing that a project can always get better and making sure it's achieving its purpose, even if it needs to be changed drastically after a substantial investment of time and effort. Take an apartment complex built in the mountains. The developers thought that the materials and strategies used to construct the buildings were enough to make them stable, but it became clear upon inspection that they were falling down the side of the mountain at a rate of about an inch or two a year. They were safe for a couple years, but they ultimately needed to be closed down temporarily so their entire support system could be rebuilt. Revision is about seeing beyond the relief at finishing something and seeing whether it is as good as it needs to be. And that can be tricky. Once we've done some substantial work on our project, we also have to recognize when the project is truly complete. We shouldn't just write one draft and assume it's now unchangeable, but we also have to develop a feel for when a project is done even if it isn't some unobtainable level of perfect yet. Basically, we can't have the apartment building falling off a cliff, but the construction team shouldn't delay the opening just because they keep switching ideas for the front door handles, you know? It's also valuable to recognize when it's time to handle big versus little changes. A lot of those last minute details in writing are handled in the last stage of the writing process. Editing is when we refine our writing so it's as understandable as possible to our audience. And the mindset behind editing is one of empathy. We want to relate as much as possible to the audience so we can hone our work for them. Most of us have quirks in the way we work. Those idiosyncrasies can be helpful for us, but confusing to other people. For example, I love a good footnote, maybe a little too much. When writing, I have to constantly ask myself if my glorious pithy footnote is really something the audience needs to know, not just a fun fact or an aside only I care about. Now, depending on what we're working on, we may not have an audience per se, but we usually have someone our work is trying to serve, and they'll be best served by our work if we've gotten all the details right. This might mean making sure the graphs in a slide deck are easy for our team members to interpret when we present them during a meeting. So while each step of the writing process has a specific purpose to help us craft better writing, the essence of each step, from invention to editing, can help us create better processes and work no matter the project. Let's look at how using the whole writing process across contexts can help someone like Jean. She's just been hired as the chef of that amazing restaurant to create something like that local seasonal menu we mentioned at the beginning. Customers imagine that ideas come to her in a flash of genius, but actually she follows the steps of the writing process to systematically create great dishes. Invention is when she visits farmers markets and talks to vendors, seeing if anything is particularly good this year or if anyone is growing something new and tasty. Keeping an open mind, she racks up the possibilities. She starts making connections at that point. Arugula seems well-suited for a new grapefruit vinaigrette and a beef tenderloin dish could be prepared with a buckwheat honey glaze. These aren't full-fledged menu options, but these ideas move Jean into the planning part of the process. She figures out what it'll take to get new recipes worked out. 
Next, she uses the drafting mindset to set herself up for success. She lays out the fresh ingredients and gets her cookware prepped so she can easily make a variety of dishes in combination. This way, she doesn't have to scramble to chop parsley or frantically scrub out a saucepan. She can instead focus on important aspects of the new recipes, like seeing how long they'll take to cook and how they taste once they're done. Then it's time to use the revision mindset and think about what improvements will make these new dishes. In one dish, she might replace beef with tofu for a softer texture. Or for the salad, she might add a note of raspberry to the grapefruit dressing. Finally, with the editing mindset, she works on final tweaks that will make these dishes great for the restaurant's patrons. Maybe she adds a twist of cracked pepper or puts the sauce in a dish instead of drizzling it on the entree. The details that make a dish truly amazing for the guests. So the result isn't a final paper for a class. Instead, it's a menu of unique dishes that come from a fairly reliable process for culinary creativity. But that process uses the mindsets of the writing process we know and love. By considering how the mindsets of the writing process can be applied to different kinds of work, we give ourselves ways to tackle projects that may have nothing to do with writing. Some steps may feel more natural to us, while others don't resonate as much with us, even though we can see how they help us generate better final products. I, for one, hate editing. It's so hard to kill your darlings. The point of considering high road transfer for the writing process is that we'll get more out of it if we see how it helps in so many parts of our lives. Taking the time to do this intentional thinking about processes really does show us ways to improve our day-to-day -day lives. If Jean can make an amazing seasonal menu with the mindsets of the writing process, then the sky's the limit. Thanks for watching Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall in the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.